who the hell am I? My name is James Hanahan, and I'm a... Well, I've done a lot of things. I co-founded a performance group. I worked as a theater, music, and books critic for The Village Voice and other places. I'm a novelist, a visual artist. As you can see, I'm black. But as you may not be able to see, I'm also gay. I wrote a multi-genre book that is closer to poetry. I teach writing at the Pratt Institute and the Yale School of Drama occasionally. Blah, blah, blah. I'm basically just a guy with a lot of silly ideas who gets bored very easily. But I'm here today, live on tape, to pretend that teaching you to pay attention to one small element of the craft of writing will actually improve your writing. And who knows? It might work. It's like telling someone that watching the altimeter on an airplane will make you a better pilot. Well, duh. But if you don't also do 20,000 other things at the same time, that plane's going down. But enough about me. What about you? This exercise is all about you. For better or worse, I'm going to take you through a couple of prompts designed to get you thinking about where you come from in a playful, clear-headed way, and to use various elements of the context or contexts in which you grew up to create interest in whatever genre you cleave to and to think about how word choice creates atmosphere and character all by itself. We are creatures bound by time and place, especially in our formative years, and the way that we speak and use language, whether we know it or not, often re reveals a lot more about us than we realize, sometimes more than we'd like to admit. When Maya Angelou says, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time, this is part of what she means. And when Oscar Wilde said, the surface is what's hidden, he could have been talking about how unaware people can be about what they're, I like to use the term, serving. What you serve, to me anyway, is the unique combination of physicality and language that you present to the world, which can sometimes be quite different from who you are inside, who you want to be, or how you want other people to see you. So let's find out what you're serving, Irving. Uh, the first part of the prompt is to go to the New York Times website and take the quiz that is, there's probably a link uh, beneath this, uh, this page to tell you how to get there. Um, if you're from the UK or Ireland, there's a separate one that you can take. There's, it's not about separatism at all, but it's, uh, it's just about language, not about, you know, politics so much. Um, however, one thing you might want to note first is who the quiz fails to acknowledge. Because each of these quizzes is directed at either an American or a UK English speaker, while everyone from other countries is pretty much excluded. People who moved around a lot as kids might also find it alienating. Um, so even if you're not a native speaker, you can still go through the quizzes and find the equivalent sort of translations for some of these terms. For example, if you're from Spain or Vietnam and the quiz asks you to refer to a certain type of sandwich, you might say, respectively, bocadilla or banh mi. Or maybe you can think of some even more specific regional word for that item. Next, supplement the quiz by adding five expressions you heard either when you were growing up or as recently as you can remember. If you can't think of any of those, write down five expressions that your family or friends used to use when you were young. One of my favorite sort of personal expressions is uh, a friend of mine named Troy um, loves to use the term featuring um, to de determine whether or not someone is interested in him. He'll say, oh, he wasn't featuring me, and it's featuring like featuring Shaka Khan, like Rufus featuring Shaka Khan. Um, but I don't know anyone else who uses that term. Um, there are specific people in one's life who, who have expressions that are endemic only to them. And I find that really fascinating. All right, so you're probably done with all that, even 
even though you're not, I know you're not done with it, but you probably stopped the recording for a moment. I, I would hope that you did. Um, and if you didn't, stop it now and go do what I asked you to do and then come back. So then take your word list and turn it into a monologue. If you want the character to seem older, use the older expressions. Like, you know how old people are always saying dungarees for jeans or icebox for refrigerator. Actually, I think that generation is almost gone now, but they, there are still a few people, our elders, who we love and respect. Um, if you want the character to seem younger or more contemporary or hip or like someone trying to be hip, um, use the most up-to-date expressions on your list. Let the expressions you choose randomly guide the story and shape the character. You could even write a character who tries to be hip, but makes herself look ridiculous because she can't get the lingo right. She's like somebody who's trying to fit in just so hard that it fails. Um, some fiction writers feel the need or the pressure to remove regional dialect and jargon and idiosyncratic expressions and like personal like expressions like the, the thing that Troy does um, from their writing, sort of like newscasters speaking a very standard English so that they can reach the widest possible audience, which I always hear to my ear always sounds like the whitest possible audience, and that's not really who I'm looking <laughs> to, to please. Um, to me, that seems a lot less real and engaging than reckoning with the fun ways that people uh, play with language just in, in speech and on the page, um, and use it to create various communities, um, be they families, work environments, friendships, or other kinds of relationships. Um, when I read a book about the southern U.S. and people don't use any colorful expressions, for example, I get really antsy. Um, there are a lot of real southerners who speak so inventively that if you transcribe what they said, your character would actually seem less believable and maybe sort of crazy. So you have to find a balance, or, as they say down south, that dog won't hunt. Um, that's pretty much my prompt, um, but I have a special shout out. If your character wants to buy a wedge and take the subway to the city for the goof, then you are probably from my homeboy. <laughs> you are probably from my hometown. Excuse me. What up, home slice? Thank you for watching.